Hi, I'm Hugh Reslin with Microchip's FPGA Business Unit. In this video, we're going to be having a run through of the Polar Fire SOC MSS Configurator. First, we'll have a look at why you'd use the MSS Configurator, then we'll have a look at how to install and launch the Configurator, and finally, we'll have a look at configuring an MSS component. So getting started, why would you use the Polar Fire SOC MSS Configurator? Well, to begin with, from a software point of view, on system startup, the Polar Fire SOC MSS runs startup code that it gets from the Polar Fire SOC HAL. That startup code configures things such as the DDR, the system clocks, the cache, and MSSIOs, and so on. To actually configure this code and give it values, XML is generated by the MSS configurator. That XML is then converted into C header files by the Polar Fire SOC configuration generator. These C header files are included in bare metal applications and provide values for the startup code. From a hardware point of view, certain signals might need to be routed from the MSS through the FPGA fabric to an IO. So for example, on the icicle kit, the UART signals are routed through the fabric. It could also be the case that you want to take advantage of a fabric component. For example, if you had um, an accelerator in the fabric or if you were using some RAM that's found in the fabric, you can interface to the FPGA hardware or fabric through a fabric interface controller or FIC from the MSS. And to let you do this, the MSS configurator generates a Libro component which will match the configuration that you've just created. And you can then import that component into Libro to use in the hardware flow. And when I'm talking about the configuring of MSS IOs, if we have a, when we have a look in the configurator, in the IO configuration tab, we'll be able to see we have loads of different headings. So for example, we have EMMC, which is in bank four, and SD, which is in bank four. These are the actual FPGA pins that these signals are routed to. Now we can have either EMMC or SD, and which signals make it to the actual pin is determined by a MUX, and the value for this MUX is set by the bare metal startup code. So depending on the configuration you use, different startup code needs to be generated. And finally, when it comes to the actual software flow for Polar Fire SOC, we have our Polar Fire SOC MSS configurator up here at the top of our software flow. On the left hand side, we have our hardware. So we've got a bit of a red line here to actually show which side is which. So for our hardware flow, we need a Libro component that then allows us to run the Libro flow, such as synthesizing our design, running place and route, and generating a bitstream. And then we can program from our Libro flow onto our target. But the XML is the other output of the configurator. And this is then used in the HSS, if it's configuring the system, or in the bare metal flow, if that's the only application that's going to be run on the system. And this then gets programmed into the target, so it gets run on system startup. Now let's have a look at how we install and launch the MSS Configurator. The MSS Configurator is installed by default with Libro SOC version 12.5 and above. You can download Libro by going to microsemi.com, selecting FPGA and SOC from Products and Services, and in here, select FPGA and SOC Design Tools, select FPGA Design Tools, and then select Libro SOC version 12.0 and later. In here, this has taken you to the product page and you can then select the downloads tab in the top right to download Libro for Windows and Linux. Just be aware that if you're using Libro, you're going to need to get a license to run it. If you're using an icicle kit, you can take advantage of the free silver licenses that are available for your kit. And to do this, go to the licensing section of the Libro um, product page. And in here, you can find information on how to actually apply to get a Libro license. 
The other option you have, which doesn't require a license, is installing the standalone Polarfire SOC MSS configurator. This is the exact same as what's bundled with Libro, but it doesn't require a license. It can be found under FPGA and SOC in products and services, and then under FPGA and SOC design tools. Under SOC design tools, and then select the Polarfire SOC MSS configurator. This again is the product page and it gives you some information about the configurator and you can download it for Windows and Linux from the Downloads tab. When you've installed the MSS configurator, typically a start menu entry is created. So if I search for MSS, I have both the standalone and Libro bundled configurator installed. And I have two options for MSS configurator available here. And if I scroll down into all programs and open up Libro SOC version 12.5's install folder, which is here, I can see I also have a shortcut for the MSS configurator placed in my start menu. If this hadn't come up, if your start menu entry hadn't been created, or you wanted to use the MSS configurator in a scripted flow, you can also launch it directly from either the standalone installation or from a Libro installation. If we look from Libro, if I open up my Libro install directory, open up the designer folder and go into bin 64, if I simply type in pf, I'm taken to the polarfire underscore mss.exe executable, which is the launcher for the MSS configurator. Now let's have a look at configuring an MSS component. I have the standalone MSS configurator opened up here, and there are two options when it comes to creating an MSS component. You can either create a new configuration, for, um, or you can open an existing configuration from a saved configuration file. So when you create a new configuration, all you have to do is give yourself a module name, and this module name is actually the name that the component that, that gets imported into Libro will have. So if I call this demo MSS, you have to pick a package. And in this case, um, I'm targeting the iSchool kit, which is an MPFS, MPFS 250T ES part. And then you select your package. And again, the iSchool kit is an FCVG 484. When you click OK, the MSS component um, generate or configuration window opens for you. So you have several different um, things that you have to configure. So for example, your MSS clocks, your actual clock source um, frequency, you have your fix for your fabric interface controllers. So there are three masters and three slaves available. Um, for fix zero, we have a master and a slave. Fic one is a master and a slave. Fic two is an AXI4 slave and FIC3 is an APB master. So these FIC allow the actual MSS block to interface into our fabric and use any fabric components that we might have instantiated and generated as part of the Libro flow. Next, you have your IO configuration. So this is where you configure your actual MSS peripherals and what IOs they're going to. So this is what um, this partially uses the XML that's generated by the configurator um, and that XML actually configures or translates what's configured here. So if I enable the EMMC, for example, on bank four, these pins here show up in green as there's no conflicts with any other um, signals that might want to use any of these package pins listed here. But if I go into the SD configuration and then enable the MSS IOs for SD on bank four, these have now been highlighted in red as I have two signals trying to use the same pin and I've been given a warning or an error from the configurator. So I wouldn't be able to generate this component until I resolved it. And the resolution could either be moving my SD pins to another valid configuration or it could be disabling the SD altogether. Next, you can configure your IO ref clock and the IO configuration for each of your banks. 
and then you can also configure your DDR memory. Now it's quite handy if you're using the iSchool kit. When you select LP DDR4, all of the configuration values in the DDR topology, controller, initialization and timing tabs are all auto populated with the defaults of the iSchool kit for you. So you don't have to configure any of the values in these tabs here. And then finally, there's the miscellaneous tab. So this allows you to configure some different aspects of the MSS. So for example, you could expose the Ultrasoc debug ports to the fabric, or you could expose the JTAG debug ports to the fabric as well. You can expose fabric to MSS interrupts if you want, and you can also lock down different IOs. When you've configured a component, you can click Generate up here in the top right, and you simply select a folder where you'd like to generate your MSS component to. So if I choose this Icicle Kit Reference Design folder here, the MSS component gets generated for me into the folder that I selected. So now that that's complete, if we have a look that, at what's made by the configurator, the first file is my demo underscore MSS dot config file. So this file I can actually open in the MSS configurator and it'll show me um, the configuration that I've used and I could update it and regenerate the component if I wanted to. So for example, this shows each of the configuration options available in the MSS configurator that have been used. The other file that's generated is a .cxe file and this is an MSS component that Libro can identify. And in your Libro design flow at the top, there's an option to import an MSS component. And this is the file that you would select to import. Next, we have our XML file. And in here, we can see the configuration values for the different aspects of our system. So this file will then be used by the SOC configuration generator to actually generate the C header files for the bare metal applications we might want to use. And then finally, we have a report.html file. And if I open it up now, it shows me the different parts or the different configurations for the MSS that I'm using. So for the fabric interface controllers, I didn't enable any, so I can see they're all selected as false. The only peripheral I enabled was the EMMC, and I can see it's enabled on bank 4. I'm using the DDR, and I can see it's DDR4, and so on. The other option you have when you're using the MSS configurator, instead of creating a blank component from scratch, is to use an, an existing configuration. So if I close the project I have open at the moment, and then select the open project option here. If I open up the Icicle Kit reference design, which I downloaded from GitHub, and go into the script support folder, there are two MSS config files here, one for SD, and one for EMMC. And if I open up the EMMC configuration file now, I can see that the MSS clocks are configured. The Gigabit Ethernet Mac was enabled, so there's now a configuration option for it on the clocks tab, along with the DDR, and I can see the clock frequent or the clock source frequency has been set. If we go into our fix, I can see that the slave interface for fix zero is enabled the master interface for FIC1, and the master interface for FIC3. And in the I.O. configurations, I can see the different I.O.s that are enabled. And if I wanted to update this design, for example, if I wanted to enable I squared C on the fabric, I can simply select fabric as an option for I squared C0. I haven't updated any of my MSS um, I.O. configurations, so this image doesn't change. And then I can regenerate the component if I want to, and I could import that into a Libro design and bring the updated XML into a bare metal project.